Okay, so we're going to talk today about the different fulfillment options available on Amazon. Um, the fulfillment really on Amazon is very much kind of tied into the platform. Um, and, you know, the fulfillment options that you choose will have an impact on, on well, how you run your business and also how well your products perform. Um, so the ones we're going through is fulfillment by merchant, which is also known as the Merchant Fulfillment Network or F, that's FBM or F, Merchant Fulfillment Network, <laughs> MFN. Um, performed by, so that's performed by merchant is where the merchant will, it's a fancy way of saying the merchant ships out their own products. Um, performed by Amazon is where the inventory is sent into an Amazon warehouse and they do the fulfillment and normally the customer service as well. There's a kind of halfway house, which is something called seller fulfilled prime, whereby, sorry, but the, with fulfillment by Amazon, these items are prime eligible which means that Prime members, if they're searching for, you know, Amazon Prime members, so I should probably explain what that is. Amazon Prime, for the very small number of people I'm sure who don't know this, is Amazon's um, subscription service where people get free um, next day delivery uh, on products. And um, you can search, you can filter within Amazon offers for um, Prime orders. Um, and if you're merchant fulfilled, Playing on vanilla merchant field, you won't be prime eligible. And fulfilled by Amazon will be prime eligible, as will seller fulfilled prime. Seller fulfilled prime is where the merchant will ship their own products, but it will be done using an approved service. For example, um, Raw Mail Tract is an approved service, um, and therefore it will have the prime badge. So, you know, this question is really which one is right for you, and it is possible to do both. Okay, so fulfilled by merchant. This is where you dispatch orders from your own warehouse. You are entirely responsible for the delivery experience. <clears throat> and that's, um, you know, obviously you don't have to, that has certain benefits as in, you know, you, you don't have to abide by quite the same strict rules that you would have to, for, for example, SFP, um, and you don't have to manage uh, inventory in, in two warehouses, but your order will not be prime eligible and therefore you can't, use it for multi-channel fulfillment so if you have items in the amazon warehouse you can not only ship those to <coughs> sorry you can not only ship those to um amazon orders well, they, um, but you can also use it to ship other orders as well so you could theoretically you could use it to um fulfill orders on ebay or um uh, on your own website but there is additional fees for that so you, anyway, you can't use multi-channel performance on FBM. So the pros and cons, I think I've probably um, covered these already for, for performed by merchant. You control the stock, you just have one warehouse and you ship the, the stock out from that warehouse. If you're doing FBA, then you have the stock in your FBA warehouse, you'd have to keep up to date and the stock in your own warehouse, you have to keep up to date. Um, you know, you don't have the the trouble of creating, you know, when you send ship, when you send products to FBA, you have to work out what you're going to send, you have to pack them a certain way, and you have to then send them over to Amazon. There's costs involved with that, and there's process. You don't have to do that with um, FBM. Um, and obviously, you can ship, use the same inventory pool to um, ship to, multi, you know, your other channels as well, and it will be the same price whatever channel it is. Whereas if you're using FBA, There'll be one price to ship an Amazon order. There's a performance fee. We'll go over that in a minute. And there's another price to um, if you're doing multi-channel fulfillment. Um, on the downside, um, if you send things by FBA, you get a, a Amazon will will boost you up the the um, the list of orders, and you'll get a higher buy box percentage. And um, we covered this in I think the first lecture we did. Um, if you refer back to that, we talked about what the buy box is. Um, so you will get uh, you you will get this uh, a higher a higher um, better chance of the buy box. Amazon gives preference to prime orders, um, and that it's and things which are sent by fulfillment by merchant are not prime eligible, um, and therefore will not get the same. Will have a lower chance of getting the buy box. Um, obviously, if you're doing your own fulfillment, then you need your own warehouse, um, and there's all the costs associated with that. And so it's it's also you have to do the packing as well. So it's more work. If you're sending stuff via FBA, then um, it is um, they're doing all the work for you. So fulfillment by Amazon um, is Amazon's fulfillment house service. Um, it's worth pointing out that there are other fulfillment house houses out there. Um, there's three PLs. Um, the benefit of Amazon, obviously, you, you it's it's a um, 
pay as you go system. So you could send one item to Amazon to store for one month and you pay one set of fulfillment fees. It's the ultimate kind of pay as you go service. Whereas if you were to use another fulfillment service, undoubtedly you'd have to sign a contract, you'd have to buy a certain amount of space, um, you'd have to you know, pay to get the, the delivery taken off the lorry. Um, there are all kinds of costs involved. With Amazon, you just, you know, you can just it, it's it's you can just pay for the service you use when you use it, which is very attractive. Um, Amazon, if you send your items into FBA, Amazon will do the dispatch and will also manage the returns. It is prime eligible. Um, and Amazon is responsible for the delivery experience. So that means if there's a problem with the delivery, um, you can say, you know, if the, if the customer complains about the um, the delivery experience, I and it gives you, you know, there's an ACZ claim. So there's a there's a negative feedback, or if they do a claim against you at Amazon, which is known as an ACZ claim, then you can say, this isn't our fault, it's Amazon's fault, and Amazon will accept that, and you will have that, you won't have that against your account. So pros of FBA, but it, it is, you know, you don't need a warehouse, you can just send the strip. A lot of suppliers, what they do is they, well, a lot of companies will get them, the stuff sent directly from the supplier to Amazon FBA. So you get companies getting stuff made in China, they get it put on a pallet in China, get it sent straight to the Amazon warehouse, and therefore you don't need any infrastructure. Um, Amazon does the work. We've talked about, you get this increase in buy box percentage. Another thing is that if you have your items in, um, in FBA, your items can be bought alongside other items. So people can put your items, items that you're selling in their box alongside things from other um, other sellers. And um, which obviously if it's FBM, they can't do that. Um, there's fees involved. Um, so we'll talk about fees in a minute. Um, there's also, you have to manage the stock levels, your FBA stock levels, um, and it's more expensive for multi-channel fulfillment. So here is a, um, this is an example of um, an FBA fulfilled item. So here's a, just a, a listing I took from the, um, uh, from, uh, from Amazon. It just shows here on the right, we've got um, a list of offers. So basically this is, the, the, the one at the top here will be the so-called buy box offer. You can see on the left here, it's um, it's got this, uh, you know, 13.07 excluding VAT. Um, so if we go down to the where are we fulfilled so we've got the, the the one at the top is shipped by amazon that's the amazon order um sorry there's one here maybe it's the next slide i wanted to show you so these ones here the smart games online and oh here we go the second one here it says dispatch this from amazon so this second this actually this is the the buy box order here is this is sold by the smart games online people but it's dispatched by amazon so there's an example of an FBA, an order which is is um, fulfilled by FBA. And you can see that the, the two below it, this one that dispatches from, you know, this one is sold by Toy Kings and dispatches from Toy Kings. So that is actually, um, that is a fulfilled by merchant item. So this is how, anyway, this is how they appear on the Amazon warehouse. So this is how they appear on the, the Amazon website. Um, So this is just an example in a second sheet of how um, customers can filter for um, Amazon Prime orders. So they're basically when they when they a lot of um, Prime the these Prime customers are Amazon's um, best customers. So um, they will be the people who buy the most from Amazon. Um, they're also, from experience, um, a picky bunch, and they like the the reason that they they have a Prime delivery is they a Prime account is they really value next day delivery. Um, they like the fact that they can order stuff on the 23rd of December and get it on the 24th in time for Christmas. Um, and so they will basically, they will filter for um, prime orders and therefore they'll only see things which they can get next day. So if you have a, um, a prime, you know, if you've got an item in FBA or sending an SFP, then you will have the opportunity to appear when these people filter for prime orders, which is a lot of people because I don't have the figures to hand, but a fairly chunky percentage of the UK population has a prime account. Um, so it's definitely, you know, in, in, and from experience, uh, having 
prime fulfilled you know having having your orders which are prime eligible does boost your sales by by double digit um percentage i mean i don't know what the figures are but it could be as much as you know 20 30 percent um so a little bit more about seller fulfilled prime um this is where you deliver your own stock but using an approved service um, so what would happen is you basically have to set up you it doesn't you, you customers don't sorry sellers don't get this automatically they have to um, enroll their account um, it's a bit fiddly truth be told but um, the what you need to do is you need to uh, sign up for the service on Amazon and at which point they would then you know you need to integrate your um, couriers in with Amazon so you would say you'd integrate your raw mail account you would integrate your, um, say, DPD account or other approved couriers, and then you would basically print, print the labels from Amazon. Um, and then, so there's a bit of setup involved. Um, it, it is um, fiddly from the point of view that um, you have to, you know, you do, you have to keep within very strict guidelines. So basically you need to be able to send, it's it's 99% or above need of the items, which uh, they say, you know, which you say are gonna arrive, they, you know, you've, you've said will arrive next day, have to arrive next day. So, you know, that doesn't really leave much room for error. Um, for example, if, you know, items, they will track the delivery of these items. And if, you know, you get my business, for example, we're at 98.8% because either because someone left a few items out of a bag or because I think Royal Mail didn't deliver them on time and we had to write a plan of action saying, dear Amazon, we're really sorry that this happened and we put these these things, um, uh, we put these processes in place to prevent this from happening again. So is it certain it's an, it's, it's an extra complication, um, but you do get this, the, uh, the benefit is that you can, you know, instead of having to go to the bother of sending things to the Amazon warehouse, you can have prime eligible orders which are delivered directly from your own warehouse. Um, a, another, um, sorry, I'm just going to the next. Um, sorry, another thing I was going to say about um, SFP is if you, the way it works is you have to, you have to have um, for next day delivery on items and they have to be free shipping as well. So that would mean that you would have to offer, you would have to include the price of your next day shipping on the items, which will make them more expensive. So you'll probably sell less to, you'll sell more to prime eligible customers who are the fussier customers, but you'll sell less to people who don't have prime accounts because the items will necessarily be more expensive. So it is a little bit giving with one hand, taking with another, and you have to weigh up whether that's a good idea or not. Okay, so let's just talk a little bit about which fulfillment is right for me. Um, if you if you've got so you've got a choice between FBA and FBM here. Um, if you're only selling on Amazon, um, then FBA is a good idea. Um, in that uh, you know you don't you you, uh, you know, a lot of these so-called FBA sellers, um, FBA brands. There's a big thing trend these days of people getting stuff made in China shipping it to FBA and then you can set up a business which has very very little you know you, you can reach a very wide range of customers with um uh you know with, with, with without having any infrastructure so you don't need your own warehouse you don't need any customer service um personnel you just literally just concentrate on getting the stuff made and optimizing your amazon listings um and uh, there's actually a big trend these days for people buying these companies up so people are finding this enormous companies have, have, have been built up buying um buying amazon fba sellers that are dominating their categories because they can just you know there's no infrastructure to buy they're just buying the brand and bolting it onto their the other brand so um certainly if you're you know if you're only selling on amazon then um, fba is a really good idea because you increase the your your um your promotion on on amazon via you know um, by getting better position in the buy boxes, um, you only really you only really want to send it to FBA items which are fast moving. You don't want to have things which are uh, sitting around because you have to pay fees um, for um, Amazon. You have to um, you have to pay the fees. So the fees you pay are the fulfillment fee. Um, I think there's another slide in there, so I won't talk about this in a moment. Um, 
the there's if you've got a small number of SKUs, so you really managing FBA for a large number of SKUs is is very time consuming. So it, it's quite you have to go through quite a long process of of uh, sending items up. If you've got only a small number of SKUs and which are having in fairly large volumes, then that is actually quite a it's quite easy to manage. If you've got a large number of SKUs in small volumes, then it's a lawful lot of prep to do the the products and is is therefore quite is quite time consuming. Um, Hazmat refers to um, items which are dangerous chemicals, um, have dangerous chemicals in them, which could be, well, I mean, it's a broad range of things. Um, it could be, um, you know, batteries and things like that. And then certain, I'm saying, the, the point of what I'm trying to say here is certain things cannot be sent into FBA. Um, and uh, they, those, you need to read the rules and that beforehand and understand whether your products have these um, issues. I mean, certainly things which have hazardous chemicals in them and some batteries can't be sent in. Um, and because of the extra kind of, you know, these these, these items are um, going to be, you know, going from your warehouse or from, you know, whatever warehouse they're in to Amazon and they're going to get, you know, put in the, we're going to be moved around the warehouse quite a lot. You really should be sending things which are sturdy um, and aren't going to be broken. Um, and, uh, you know, if you, Things have been at the extreme, you know, things like light bulbs and stuff like that are probably a bad idea. But then, I mean, these things are probably things, in my opinion, which don't uh, probably shouldn't be posted anyway. So, um, you know, um, uh, also um, the, the amount of money you spend on um, FBA really is, is you know, the, the cost of storage and the cost of fulfillment are related to the size of the item. So it's easier to send and easier to store and cheaper than large, than bulky, low value items. So, you know, things like, you know, phones or, uh, for example, uh, you know, phone accessories, you know, work well in FBA, something like big plastic baby baths are quite difficult to do. So just talking about FBM, I mean, if you're selling um, things yourself, I mean, if you're selling things multi-channel, obviously if you're, you're then, if you've got your own warehouse, you can send very easily send you know, the same stock across multiple channels, whereas that is more difficult on Amazon. Um, slow moving items uh, you can have in your own website, in your own warehouse, and you'll um, you, you know, presumably you'll have a warehouse that you're already paying for, and therefore it won't be an incremental cost of, of having these items. Um, so if you have a large catalog, um, then you know you say slow moving, slow moving large catalog. That's the kind of thing that you would want to have FBM and then perhaps you'll move your fast moving items into FBA. Um, oversized items, there is uh, with the pricing, the, the fees with um, Amazon, there's two levels, there's standard size and oversize, and the oversized items are much, much more expensive to, um, to send via FBA. So they're probably better sent via FBM. Um, if you got something which is a multi-part item that you know in in order to send that via FBA would have to be in the same box so you can't really you know you, you either need to need to combine it into the same box or send it via FBM so let's just talk a little a little about some of the the options for FBA um we have um there's an option for cross-border fulfillment. So you can, um, if you go into your, you know, you, you need to enroll on FBA as a seller, which is very easy. Then there's a number of settings you have to choose um, and which are you, your access from settings in the top right hand corner. And then I think there's a specific option for FBA. One is cross-border fulfillment, whether you want to enable these items to be fulfilled cross-border. Um, and uh, you can choose whether you know whether customers from you know all over the world can buy these items and amazon will fulfill them um there is a number of settings around uh, removal and furbishing so if you have um an item which is um uh, you know you can you can choose if you if you have items in either in amazon which um you don't want to um you have so if you want to remove items from you've sent over items to fba they're in the amazon warehouse you want to remove them, you can either choose to have them sent back on a regular basis. Um, Amazon has something called a long term storage fee, which kicks in after I think six months. And then the amount of storage, um, amount of the storage cost goes up enormously. So you want to ensure that your items get sent back before that point. You can choose to have them automatically sent back. Um, 
or you can choose to have them, for example, automatically destroyed or automatically given away. Um, the same thing with things which are, uh, which are damaged um, in the warehouse or returns, you can choose to have them sent back to you automatically. Um, there's a cost of getting things sent back to you, I think it's about 60 pence an item. Um, which obviously is not that expensive, but you know, if you've got a lot of items, they don't they charge you per item, um, and it, the costs build up. Um, you can choose whether to have items um, refurbished for you. Um, so um, this means that um, uh, if you, a return gets sent back and it's, it's an out of box return, Amazon has a service to make these make these beautiful again, um, or you can just automatically have them sent back to you. Um, there is a barcode preference. Um, what that means is, you know, obviously most items will have barcodes. You can choose whether to use uh, the manufacturer's barcode, so literally the, the barcode on the product, um, or you can choose to uh, fix your own barcode, um, or, you know, that'll be the one that's... Um, if you choose to fix your own barcode, then items will need to all be re-barcoded before they're sent out. So Amazon, you'll say, okay. Um, so I just wind back slightly. You can. Uh, there's a choice on Amazon to um, to either have your your inventory mingled with other people's inventory or kept separately. Now, what that means is, if you have a um, an item which is uh, where the inventory is commingled, it's called. This means that um, what 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 will happen is an item will be sold, and Amazon will take an item which uh, one of these items with the same barcode and send it out. And it might be one of your items, but it might it could be an item which is sent by another set have been sent in by another seller um, with the same barcode. So if you um, I'm just going to standard product. This is a little dinosaur that I have on my this is a standard product which is made by a toy manufacturer. If I send this in, they could send out this one or they could send out um, one by another manufacturer if I choose to use the manufacturer's barcode. Obviously, you know, some uh, there's some bad actors out there and some people will send fakes into Amazon. And it could be that if if your the inventory is commingled, then you will have sent in, you know, proper inventory and but someone else will have sent in fakes and they will send out a fake in, instead of your product. Um, now, I don't know how often this happens, but I've certainly heard horror stories of it. Um, and the way to avoid this is to rebarcode all your items. Now and so there's a I think there's an extra fee if you rebarcode your items, um, and also it's a bit of an effort as well. So, um, but it depends how big a problem this is for your business. Um, you can choose whether to do your own customer support or let Amazon do the customer support for you, um, and you can also choose whether to let Amazon export these products on your behalf and sell them internationally. Okay, let's talk a little bit about FBA fees here. There's a number of fees for each um, for an item. We can see this is a, just a screenshot of the um, uh, the Amazon rate card. Um, if you do a search online for Amazon FBA rate card, you will find this product. Um, so for each order you 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 sent in, there is a fulfillment fee, and this is based on the weight and the dimensions of the item. And you can see here on the left hand side at the top, it says small envelope, and it'll have the weight at the bottom and the maximum dimensions and under that is uh, a standard envelope and it's got the weights and the maximum dimensions and you'll see here on the on the um on the left here there's um the the, the cost for, for filling it in the uk but there's also the local fulfillment costs here so if you had it in a in a let's say you have a small uh, a standard envelope product and it's below 100 grams then um in you, it gets sent in locally in Germany. I think that says one euro seventy nine. Um, so that would be the local fulfillment cost on that. And there's also the cross border fulfillment cost. So that would be if you um, have it in a UK warehouse, but it gets sent to um, an international location. I think if that's the European fulfillment network. So that would be if you have it in the UK warehouse, but it gets sent um, to a European destination, you would pay more for that fulfillment. There's also a storage fee. So this is charged on the per cubic meter per month, or I think, I don't know what this is, or um, the cubic foot per month, depending on your location. Um, and that is, uh, I think it's it's charged on the average amount of storage you use over the course of a month. Um, there's something called, to, to these fees um, can be seen, um, 
in a number of places. Um, one is you can download a report from the FBA reports. If you go to um, your Amazon account, it's got reports and an FBA reports. You can download something called a fee preview, which will tell you what fees have been charged on your different items. Um, there's also you can go into um, in the there's also reports and then transaction level reports and you can see what fees have been charged. Um, so there's also other fees which um, you get charged are the removal fees, which we talked about in the last slide. And then there's a number of optional fees. Um, so these in, in we've talked about uh, here, it's, it, the optional fees are listed under point three here. Um, the optional fees include the returns and disposal we talked about, but also when you send the items into Amazon, they have certain uh, requirements for how these items are prepared. So, for example, um, we have the some items Amazon actually requests that you you rebarcode them. So it could be on Amazon that they have two items which have the same barcode. Their, their inventory is not perfect, and therefore they will request that you basically put one of their barcodes over this item to identify it. Um, or if you've requested to use your own barcodes, then you'll have to barcode them. Now, you can either do this yourself, or if you send these things in without having done it, then Amazon will do it on your behalf and will charge you a fee per item. And it's the same with um, the preparation of the product. So if you've got a, an open box item, I mean, okay, if you were to send this little dinosaur, um, if you wanted to send this into Amazon, this would have to be polybagged. Now, if you sent it in like this, then they would basically polybag it on your behalf and they would charge you to do it, or you could do it yourself. Now, something also to notice here that there's two sets of things. There's standard size. Here we've got, we've got standard envelope, large envelope, standard parcel, and then there's oversize. And this depends on the, um, the size of the item. So you can see here that um, a, if you've got a small oversize, less than a kilo here, it's four pounds eight. But if you've got a standard parcel, which is less than a kilo, it's 245. So there's actually a big difference in the cost. And obviously, if you've got these oversized items quite big, and therefore, you know, you can't get that many in a box which you send to Amazon. So they're quite a lot more expensive to, to send. OK, so on a, in Amazon, you have these merchant fulfilled listings and you have your FBA listings and they're actually different. And you can filter them in the system to see your your inventory and these, you know, your merchant fulfilled inventory and your FBA fulfilled inventory. Um, and you need to can you know, an item needs to be in one of these two states and you, you can convert between the two. So if you go into into Amazon, you can select a listing and say convert to um, FBA and you can also convert it back. That is, if you just go into a, you've got a, an item which is already in your inventory. Um, if you uh, want to create inventory or you sorry, you can create uh, convert items in bulk using something called the inventory loader file. Um, or you can, uh, if you're creating um, new items, you can create them as FBA items initially, um, and that's using the category specific inventory file. So here I've just got a, a, a page which shows some inventory. And if we look on the left here, it said there's a little button for options or actions, I think it says. Um, and if you select the items, the um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight. So options seven and eight, you can basically select the inventory and you can change its fulfillment method. Um, and you can see here in the middle, it's got for, it, it, there's the filters fulfillment type or Amazon or merchant. So you can basically see all your FBA inventory or all your merchant inventory, to, to get inventory together in one place. Um, and you can also from the screen, you can convert between the two inventory types. So what I did is I selected an item and I did convert to fulfillment by Amazon and it'll basically say, OK, yes, we're, we're it gives us the option to convert these things. You can convert the um, the item or you convert and you can create an inventory um, and you can set up inventory at the same time. Um, we'll go over that in a moment. Something which I'm not showing here, if you go through the, uh, the process of converting, it will ask you whether it is a dangerous item or not. And therefore, you will then um, you'll have to enter the battery information or any you know, any any hazmat information about the product. So, how do you send up inventory to item? The, uh, sorry, inventory into an Amazon FBA warehouse. 
um, you need to basically create, there's a number of ways of doing it. One is you can um, click and do center Amazon, and that is what you will, you'll select the item, and that's what um, you'll, if we go back to this thing here, it'll say create fulfillment order, which is the, the third one down. And what that will do is um, you will basically go to this ascend to Amazon screen where you can basically, you know, say this is the SKU, this is how many I want to send, and it will take you through a process of doing it. And that works quite well if you've got only a few items to send up. So you can just select them from this screen and then do create fulfillment order and you will send up the inventory. Um, or if you've got a number of items or uh, you can create something called a shipping plan. And this was is a process you um, you go through to to create um, a shipment into Amazon. So you will create a special spreadsheet which basically has the the SKU um, and the amount of inventory you want to send up. You'll upload that into Amazon and it'll take you through a process of um, creating um, a, a shipment. Um, it'll go into something called a shipping queue and you will go, you will, um, you'll upload the shipping plan. The shipping plan will, uh, will appear in the system. You'll then go into the shipping queue, which will have that plan in it and you'll go, it'll step you through a process of sending up the inventory. That's good. So it'll say, okay, there may be some problems. What well, the, the first stage, you know, you'll have to may have to delete some products. It'll say that for some reason you can't send these into FBA. It'll then take you to the next process. The item which says these items need to be um, uh, need processing in a certain way. So it'll say, okay, these items need labels. These items need boxing, um, and you would download a list of the barcodes, and then you could then label these items, um, and then. Um, Finally, when you get to the end, it'll tell you that um, it'll, it'll ask you to, to tell Amazon what you're sending up to it. So it'll say, OK, you need to say we're sending these numbers of boxes, <clears throat> these boxes, and you would need to create a box packing list. <clears throat> so excuse me, getting a bit hoarse with too much talking. Uh, you would need to send something called a box packing list, which would go create a box packing list, which will appear on your um, on the inventory on the boxes you're sending to Amazon to say what is inside you do, <clears throat> you, do um, you don't uh, you know there's, there's an option not to do this but you will have to then make an extra payment to Amazon so you need to set, tell Amazon in, in some way really exactly what you're sending um, and uh, you would need to label the boxes to say this is what is in this box you need to prepare the items that go in the box in the way that Amazon specifies um, from experience, Amazon really doesn't like it. You know, the, the, the thing with Amazon really at all times is to do exactly what they say. Otherwise, the inventory might get rejected um, and you don't want it sent back to you um, or they'll charge you extra fees. Um, finally, you, the Amazon has its own um, um, carriers that basically you will, you will arrange to pick up the items. And it's actually pretty, you know, as these things go, it's pretty cheap. You can send a box, quite a large box. There is a, a limit. I think it's up to. 50 odd centimeters, um, um, largest dimension, maybe bigger than that. Um, and uh, UPS picks these things up and I think they charge about five pounds, which is a fairly good deal. So here's, uh, this page here shows the send to our Amazon thing. So you will go, have gone to the inventory screen, said, okay, I want to send the items to Amazon. It'll show you the product that you, um, selected and you can say okay I'm sending into you know you can say how many boxes or how many units you're sending up and it'll that's the first stage is, is choosing the inventory you send the second is you confirm um, the shipping details and the second you print out the labels to go on the boxes which you send up to Amazon um, if you want to do a, an FBA shipment this is where you basically go into inventory and then manage FBA shipments and you then basically this would go you you upload a shipping plan and uh, you would then work on that shipping plan which goes through the stages that i i mentioned okay question with a big question with the fba is how you manage the inventory um, how do you decide how much to send up there's um, a number of different ways you can do this um, you can if you have a third party tool uh, the third party tools to do this um, which will tell you how much you've sold and then make recommendations um, Amazon has something called a selling coach report, which is under the reports um, section in Seller Central, and that has a field in it called in recommended inbound quantity, which will recommend how much you send at any particular time. Um, there's also 
you know, if you want to do your own calculation, there's something called an inventory health report, which will tell you how many units you've sold. Um, and you, from that, you can work out, you know, okay, if you know how many units you sold in a two week period and you know how, how long it takes you to get the inventory and you know, you know, if you want to keep, say, about two weeks worth of inventory in stock at one time is a good amount, then um, you can work out how much inventory you need to send up. Um, you can set um, inventory alerts. Um, you know, basically, if you go to inventory, one of the options is to set inventory alerts. Uh, here we go. Uh, set in set replenishment alerts. It's like the one, two, three, four, five um, down. Um, you can basically set an alert, and Amazon will tell you when it thinks you should send up more, and it will tell you when you've reached a, whatever limit you set. Um, so by using this historical data, you can predict the demand for your um, for your products and work on how much to send up to Amazon. So I think we're bringing this. This, uh, this is my second to last slide. Um, sending stuff up to Amazon is a bit fiddly. So I've created some videos on this, which you can see on my YouTube channel. Which, if you search for Vendlab e-commerce school, you'll find. Um, I've also written an Udemy course, um, which is all about Amazon. You can find it from that link there. Um, if you do a search, if you want to, uh, there's uh, Amazon has a, obviously a section on its site on FBA, um, and if you specifically want to see the cost, there's an FBA rate card. Do a search for FBA rate card UK. You'll be able to see the one for the UK and also for the different European countries as well. So that's my presentation. Um, thank you for listening. Um, I think it's time for some questions. Brilliant. Thanks very much, Trevor. Um, so, yeah, we're going to move over to the uh, Q&A section now. So do keep those questions coming in. And um, I think there's just a couple of things to note. So um, we will be sending out the recording of this presentation along with the slides. I know we had a session um, that wasn't on Amazon that the recording didn't actually happen, but we're, I'm I can assure you it did happen today. So um, that will be sent along with the slides. I know there was a couple of slides on there that were quite small on some screens, so you might not have been able to see um, some of the information, but have a look on the uh, slides when they get sent. Um, so a couple of questions here. Oh, sorry, there was another thing to note. Um, Trevor, you mentioned cross-border FBA. It's worth noting that as of January this year, Amazon is unable to fulfill FBA orders uh, across the border between the UK and EU. Uh, um, yes. So if you do want to continue, if you do use FBA or you want to use FBA and you want to fulfill into Europe, those um, your inventory will need to send be sent into individual um, fulfillment centres in the EU. But we can send out some information on that. Yeah, something I didn't talk about was Pan European FBA, which is where you can send it into you can send it into a, a single European warehouse um, and have it fulfilled throughout Europe. But that used to be um, include the UK, but now the UK is in, no longer part of that program. Um, but there are VAT implications to that. You need to be registered for VAT in European countries. Yeah, correct. So uh, pan-European FBA has continued. It's just the um, it doesn't cross the border between the UK and EU. So get your inventory into the EU, please. Um, question here, uh, bear with me one sec. So we mentioned um, uh, seller fulfilled Prime. Um, what are your thoughts on using a 3PL for seller fulfilled Prime? I know there is 3PLs out there that advertise that they are um, eligible. Well, I, think, I think it's fine if they say they can do it. I mean, it's just a question of can they do it or not. I mean, it, you know, they can either do it or they can't. I mean, they should be, um, you know, if the 3PL is worth their salt, then they should be able to do it. And then for which point I think it's perfectly fine. Yeah, I mean, I, th I think the important point here was that we were talking about um, you know, using seller fulfilled prime or merchant fulfilled fulfillment. Um, but if you're not set up to do that and you do sell across multi channels, I think a 3PL that that, that is eligible for seller fulfilled prime is is a very good option. Um, it keeps the overheads away from warehousing and all that kind of thing um, and allows you to continue selling multi channels. So I think it's a very good way of doing it. Um, question here from Chris. We hold stock in Rotterdam for EU customers. Is best to sell from Amazon Germany? Um, it's a good question, actually, Chris. I think I'm not sure that Amazon currently have any fulfillment centres in the Netherlands, so it might be best to, to store that in Germany. I don't know if you've got any thoughts on that. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure they do either have any fulfillment. It's not clear to me. I, it, I mean, Amazon um, Amazon Netherlands has only just opened, so um, 
I don't think they do. Yeah, it's it's a, it's a good question, Chris. I mean, if you're holding stock in in Rotterdam, it's relatively easy to get over to Amazon Germany, but you would have to be VAT registered in Amazon in in Germany to do that. Um, but do follow up with myself, Chris, and we can get you some answers on that. We've got some really good colleagues in the Netherlands um, and some good 3PL partners over there. Um, question from Claire. We have products that sell well in some colour lines, but not so well in others. Should we use FBA for the popular colours and F FBM or SFP for the less popular ones? So I guess this is a wider question, really, about dipping your toes into FBA, um, if you've got popular products, or is it best to get the non-popular products into FBA? I don't know if you've got any thoughts on that, Trevor. Non-popular products. I mean, certainly you can, I mean, if you've got a single product, in a, I, mean, it, I mean, one option is to just, you know, have the, the, is to have everything, it depends how many SKUs you've got, right? You know, it, I think it's, you know, if you, if you have, um, I mean, I think you should send, certainly send more of the popular products. I mean, you could just send one of the unpopular products, as it were. And if you just have one product, it's actually, I, mean, I talked about the long-term storage fees. I think one, if you have just one of something, they want you to keep a broad range. So you can send just one, one of this product and then have one product in stock and then just, you know, um, pay, the fulfill, pay the storage fees for that one product. Um, and I mean, certainly, you know, it, it, if you've, if you've, you know, got a relatively small range, I'd say it's probably much easier to do um, FBA than it is to do SFP. Um, yeah, I think, that, again, it's a, it's a more broader question. I think FBA is a really good way of sort of dipping your toes in if you have got popular products. There's no harm in trying it. You can always remove the inventory, see how it goes. I think it's the same thing with with everything on marketplaces. There's a lot of trial and error. So my advice would be give it a go. If it doesn't work, get it out. Well, I think of it, so basically my other business is a, a retail business. We've got thousands of SKUs. It's not actually practical for us to send them all up to FBA. So if we want to keep uh, have as many products as possible in Prime, it makes a lot of sense for us to have, you know, to use SFP. Now, if you are a company which has got 10 SKUs and you make them all yourself, then I think that it makes a lot of sense to, to send them into FBA because SFP is a bit of a pain and it's a bit fiddly. Um, yeah, absolutely. So, um, question here from Mark. It's a good question, actually. How does customer service work for uh, Seller Fulfill Prime? Um, so Seller Fulfill Prime, you would take, you, you would do all the customer service. Um, FBA, yeah. FBA, you do, they do all the customer service it's around the it. If it's a, sorry, if it's an FBA uh, order, Amazon will take care of all the customer service to do with delivery. If it's around the product itself, that will come to you. I have a point here. Um, basically, if you uh, Amazon, basically, uh, if you sign up for SFP, they basically these are um, they they basically give themselves unlimited rights to basically deal with the customers. So they will basically they will say, you know they they you know will, will will can refund items for any. They give themselves the right to refund the items for any reason. So you could have a situation whereby. The item is, you know, the customer says it didn't arrive, but, you know, the tracking, even if it's like sent by Amazon, the tracking said it did arrive and the customer said it didn't arrive and Amazon will just automatically refund the order. And, you know, because that's, you know, how they deal with Prime customers. And then you have to do something called a safety claim as an SAFE T uh, um, and, and to, to claim back the money. So you do, it's, 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 it, you know, you do open it, sending SFP, you do open yourself up to kind of, you know, I would say abuses of the system like that. You do get treated, you know, treated, um, I need to choose my words carefully here. Um, you feel like it, you know, it makes you feel more like a very small cog in a very big machine. Um, I, think, with yeah, SFP. I think with everything, um, it, there can be added complications, but there are channels to sort of recoup that money. And, and yeah, you have, to, you have to be, you have to be on it. Let's leave it like that. Yeah, um, that that is actually very important. It can, I've, I've heard lots of stories about you know inventory going missing and 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 for, uh, removal orders going wrong and things like that. So again, with anything to do with marketplaces, keep on top of it. Have a look at your reports, and you should be okay. And um, question here from Bill, um, and another good question actually. What sort of terms, stipulations, time limits, and fees are associated with seller fulfilled Prime? So obviously we. 
um, if you want to be using Seller Fulfilled Prime, you have to apply and stick to certain certain time frames. Are you, can you give a bit more information on those time frames or stipulations and when well, Amazon? I, think, I mean, uh, you know, certainly if you got okay, so if you if you do SFP right, then you have a cut off point every day, and that cut off point. I mean, say you had a pickup at four, it could be that your cut off point would actually be maybe three, but then you might start getting all, I mean, say my business, you know, we're going to pick up at four and I'm, I'm just going to slightly make these figures up, but you know, the cutoff point for SFP is at three. So people can order things and expect to get delivered the next day up to three. But then of course, if they order at three, items are still going to be processed for some time after that. So it might be that someone orders at three or, you know, 2.59, and then we don't get the order until 20 minutes later, at which point it doesn't leave you much time to pack it. And then, you know, if you if you're doing, you know, it could be that that one order, if you're doing 100 orders a day, it could be that that one order will then mean because you didn't you missed an order because it came in right on the limit. Um, that that one order will mean that you you you're below your your threshold, your performance threshold, which is 99 percent, and which at which point you'll get a warning and you'll have to do a plan of action. So it's very, very sensitive. Um, so, yeah, so there's a time cut off and, they, and there's a performance target. Um, you basically buy the if you're if you're doing it via warm mail, you would you would if you're a big seller, then you might get the opportunity to use to use Amazon's um, uh, courier service. If you're small or smaller, then you can use, for example, raw mail or DPD, and you will you would have to use for for SFP if it's next day, you'll have to use Walmart 24 or similar. Um, but you will pay for that through your account. And so it's whatever rates that you negotiate with your with your your carrier. So there you don't, you know, there's no there's no payment to Amazon for doing this. But you have to use a more expensive shipping rate um, and you have to, you know, there's certain uh, you know, certain criteria you have to reach. Was that the question? So there was there was a number of uh, active factors there no, I think, for I, that I, question. I think that I think that's covered off most of it. What we'll do, Bill, is we'll send it. I mean, there's obviously constraints um, and certain criteria for Seller Fulfilled Prime. So on the follow up email after this session, we'll we'll send the information that Amazon have on that to give you some more information. But, but no, thank you. Thank you very much, Trevor. This is an interesting question again from Chris, and this is something that I haven't heard of. Um, the question is, Amazon Japan have done smash tests by dropping them onto concrete floors. Is this common practice in Europe? Smash tests of what products? I, I assume products. It's not something I've heard of before, but I don't know if you've heard of any kind of crash testing or anything like I, that. I haven't heard of that. I mean, I think that there is, I mean, I would, I would, you know, I mean, in some ways, I think it's not a bad thing to do. I mean, you know, if you've got products which, you know, I always try to imagine, you know, when packing things, I always say, like, imagine someone stepping on that, you know, is that, you know, because that's the kind of thing that's going to happen. I mean, I would say that um, it's it's a good idea to avoid any kind of de any kind of delicate item sending it to FBA, but I mean, I think sending, you know, you know, I think anything which is 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 delicate, you probably shouldn't be selling by e-commerce anyway, really. So, um, but I think FBA even more so. I think you need to think: is this, you know, it's it's a bit fiddly. It's going to be a bit of a problem. Um, no, it's a good point. Like I say, I haven't heard of Amazon doing it themselves, but it's it's probably good. That's quite, that's quite a high bar, though, dropping something onto concrete. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, there's <laughs> nothing wrong with um, doing your own smash test when sending things into into FBA, I guess. Um, we looks like we we haven't got any more questions, but if there is any more questions, do uh, follow up with Trevor or myself. Um, the contact information for my team is on the screen there, um, and that is Trevor's email address there. But again, that will be sent out in the follow-up email. So I just want to take this opportunity, um, first of all, to thank everyone for joining today. Um, hopefully you found that useful um, on all things FBA. I'd also like to thank Trevor for coming along and speaking today. We do have one more session. Again, we'll send out the information about that and all the previous sessions where you can access um, the recording and the slides. So um, thank you everyone for joining and hopefully we'll see you all again soon. Okay, thank you. Bye.